A more outlandish quartet hadn't set foot, belly, claw, and jaw on sojourn in twenty years. A half-breed Thelan female, her hut master, his Twilic majordomo, and his Chevin chief of security crossed the fort's leaf-littered courtyard and entered Plagueis's reception room. With the exception of the Thelan, they looked as if they might have wandered in from the Greel forests to consort with the creatures that had constructed nests and burrows in the fort's dank corridors and lofty turrets. Plagueis and 114D were waiting just inside the gaping entrance. Welcome, Jabba the Silagic Tayor, Plagueis said through his transpirator mask. Droids had restored some semblance of order to the room and installed tables and chairs. Morning light streamed through square openings high in the wall, and a fire crackled in the stone hearth. A pleasure to see you again after so many years, Magister de Mosk, Jabba said in coarse basic. The ageless criminal lolled his huge tongue and maneuvered his great slug body onto a low platform the droids had erected. Gazing around, he added, you and your droid must visit my little place on Tatooine in the western Dune Sea. Someday soon, Plagueis said, as he lowered himself into an armchair across from the platform. Like Toydarians and Yinchori, huts were immune to force suggestions. Had Jabba known how many of his species Plagueis had experimented on over the decades, he might not have been as sociable but then the hut's own penchant for ruthlessness and torture were legendary. As a tattoo on his arm attested, he cared only for members of his clan. He didn't bother to introduce his subordinates by name, but as was often the case with many of the thugs and ne'er-do-wells with whom he surrounded himself, two of them had reputations that preceded them. The pink-complexioned Twilik was Bib Fortuna, a former spice smuggler whose own species had turned its back on him. Tall and red-eyed, he had sharp little teeth and thick, shiny leku growing from a hairless cranium that looked as if it had been inexpertly stuffed with rocks. The Cheban, a two-meter-high snout that had sprouted arms, legs, and tail, was Ephant Man, celebrated as a warrior among his own kind and mildly Force-sensitive. He wore a blanket someone might have thrown over him to hide his ugliness. Plagueis knew from contacts in the Trade Federation that Mon was involved in a smuggling operation on technophobic Syria, supplying swoops to a gang of young upstarts. The Thelan was unknown to Plagueis. Pale and shapely, she had lustrous orange hair and purple beauty marks that ran down her face and neck to disappear beneath a revealing costume. Diva Shaliqua, Jabba said, when he realized that Plagueis was studying her. A singer in the band. As her name suggests. A gift from Ingoda, in place of credits owed to me. Jabba's big eyes settled on the Thelan. She and Diva Funquita came as a pair, but I made Funquita a present to Ardula in the hope of smoothing over our lingering rivalry. My first mistake, the second, introducing Shaliqua to Romeo Treblanc, who would move worlds to possess her. Notorious for his gambling, Treblanc owned the galaxy's opera house on Coruscant. Why Jabba chose to associate with gamblers and other lowlifes was a mystery to Plagueis. In some ways, the hut's illicit empire was the inverse of Higo Damasks, where, if nothing else, the criminals were at least politicians, corporate honchos, and financiers. His coming to sojourn was both uncharacteristic and unexpected. Are you here? To talk about Treblanc or Gardula, Plagueis asked. Jabba reacted in annoyance. As always, state to the heart of the matter. 
but I can appreciate the fact that you're a busy immune. Mm. He wriggled to adjust his position on the platform. I know you were instrumental thirty years ago in giving Gadula the run of Tatooine as a base for her slavery operations and pod racing events. I've come this far to inform you that Tatooine will soon have a new overseer. He gestured to himself. Me. Plagueis said nothing for a long moment. I was under the impression that Tatooine was already as much yours as Gardula's. Appearances can't be deceiving. I've tried to undermine her influence by fomenting distrust among the so-called Sand People, the Tusken Raiders, but success at chasing her off-world continues to elude me. Plagueis made an adjustment to the breath mask. How can I help? Jabba appraised him. I happen to know that Ardula hasn't been able to make good on the loans you extended. Hmm? What she earns from events like the Bunta Eve classic, she loses to gamblers. That much is true, but what of it? I want you to stop funding her, so I can starve her out. Ooh. Plague shrugged. Your information is incomplete, Jabba. I haven't funded her enterprises in a decade. Jabba balled his hands in anger. You have influence over members of the Banking Clan and the Trade Federation who are funding her. Plagueis lifted his head, as if in revelation. I see. And what can I expect in exchange? To start with, a better percentage of the profits from the races and other enterprises. Plagueis frowned in disappointment. You must know that I've no need of credits, Jabba. And you wouldn't have come this far, as you say. Unless you had learned a few things that might sway me over to your side. Jabba wriggled, restraining his anger. Ooh. In return for your help, I will weaken Black Sun's influence with the Trade Federation Directorate. I need no assistance, Plagueis leaned forward in the armchair. What do you know that I may not know? Jabba inflated his body, then allowed the air to escape him in a protracted, mirthless laugh. Oh, I know something you may not yet know about the Bandogora. Plagueis raised himself somewhat in the chair. Hideously masked Bandogora assassins had become a growing concern in the Outer Rim, posing a problem to the leadership of some of the cartels Plagueis backed. Now you have my interest, Jabba. Mm. The cult has a new leader, Jabba went on, happy to have the high ground. A human female. She has entered into a plan with Gardula. A malice air dub named Sibolto, and a Republic senator to distribute contaminated death sticks as a means of supplying the Bandogora with brain-dead recruits. Plagueis stretched out with the force to peer into the hut. Jabba wasn't lying. This human female... I've heard rumors. Again, Jabba was telling the truth. Rumors will suffice for now. The hut rubbed his meaty hands together. Her name is Komare Voza, and word has it that she is a former Jedi. Plagueis knew the name only too well. Some ten years earlier, Komare Voza had been a Padawan of Master Dooku.